spend the rest of your year or whatever. So I guess we're here at church. We were here at church last night. We're here at church this morning. I guess it's going to be a church a year, huh? Yes. I can't complain about that. Business is good. Taylor asked me last night, you preaching on the new year? I said, nah. What else did you, what was it, what was it, something else? You, you preaching about New Year's resolutions? I said, nah. She said, you preaching about Jesus? I said, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty my, that's my, that's my go-to answer for any time somebody asks me what we're preaching about. Oh, we're going to talk about Jesus and stuff, you know how it is. We talk about being new again, though, and, and, and we've had that song here before, new again, and, and you know, I, I wanted to, to speak about resolutions this morning. I wanted to speak about the new year, but God and Mr. Bill had something different planned for me. Mr. Bill told me a couple weeks ago he was going to sing Matthew 24 today, and he was excited about it. He was fired up about it. Matter of fact, he blackmailed every member of his family to get him here today to see him do it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if he did or not, but if, if he did, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to blurt that out like that. Yes, you did. Yeah, you're right, I did. I did. But Matthew has been on my heart. I mean, you, you, some of the elders in Lake Pastures, you can talk to those guys. I, Matthew, the book of Matthew is just... Man, it's, one of these, it's a great book in the Bible. And it's been on my heart for months. And, and this morning, just a cup of cold water, something we take for granted, something that uh, you know, we, don't, we don't think twice about it. We're thirsty, we go to the icebox, we get a cup of water. If, it's, if we want it cold, we put some ice in it and we drink it. Y'all realize how many people in the world don't have that luxury? They don't have that cup of cold water. If they're getting any water at all, it's out of a nasty river that's got germs and, I mean, it's just bad. What, what can we do in our lives to just give somebody a cold cup of water when they need it? Give somebody a hug. Hold somebody's hand. Give them a word of encouragement. Tell them you love them. A phone call out of the blue just to say, hey. A simple conversation with somebody who didn't have anybody else to talk to. I hope today that when we get through with Matthew, that everybody can find a cup of cold water. That's the way we want to start the new year. So if you would, turn with me uh, to Matthew chapter 10, verse 42. If you're in learning the ropes, which Dan was passing out just now, that's going to be on page 741. To read this for you. It says, and if you, look, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and start at 40. Anyone who receives you receives me. And anyone who receives me receives the Father who sent me. If you receive a prophet as one who speaks for God, you will be given the same reward as a prophet. And if you receive righteous people because of their righteousness, you will be given a reward, a reward like theirs. And if you give even a cup of cold water to one of the least of my followers, you will surely be rewarded. I want to break verse 42 down today. And that's, that's really all that we're going to talk about. I've got a couple other scriptures that are going to tie in. But I want to, I want to start with, with verse 42. Let's look, at, let's look at who Jesus is talking to right there. Whoever. Whoever gives just a cup of cold water. Whoever. You, me, them, us. It doesn't matter. There's no, there's no, there's nothing that says any priest, any, any minister, any pastor, uh, uh, whatever. No, no missionaries. You don't have to have a, a degree from the seminary. You don't have to have uh, 30 years worth of experience preaching to people. Whoever. Whoever. That's us. That's everybody. Whoever can do this will be rewarded. Whoever. Think about it. How many people have you passed driving down I-45 that are living under a bridge? Some of those people are more giving than the people that are driving the cars by. 
Some of those people have an animal that they're taking care of before they take care of themselves. Whoever can give this water will be rewarded. There are no precursors. Look, Jesus wasn't a front runner, okay? And the, the, we're going to find out here in a second, the little ones that he's talking about are everywhere. They're everywhere. But whoever can show them some mercy, whoever can show them some grace, whoever can take their hand and pray for them or talk to them when no one else will because they're frowned on. America's looking down on the homeless. Uh, our veterans who can't find homes or jobs are being stoned and, and, and thrown drinks and water and food. Our, our, you know, abused children. Who's speaking for them? Women that are stuck in sex trades. Who's speaking for them? Who's trying to help them? Whoever. Anybody can. But we just got to do it. We have to do it. We can't sit back on our hands. We can't, we can't sit down and say, oh, you know, I, I didn't see that. I don't want to get involved. I'm scared. I don't want to get involved. It's just going to bring, just going to bring more trouble to me and my family. I don't want, I don't, I'm, I'm going to walk the other way. Everybody's walking around like this. Hands in your pockets. I don't want to mess with it. I don't want to not. I didn't see that. Ah, la, 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 la. That's what, I mean, we've got a major problem with that. We turn our backs on the ones who need it the most. We drive by them every day. We turn our, our, our heads when the homeless man comes up on the corner and, and asks for a donation, a handout. Why? Because we've all been turned sour by scams and by crooked people. Let's continue reading here for a second. Let's look at the second recipient, the recipient of that uh, phrase. One of these little ones. Okay? One of the little ones. In context, Jesus is talking about the very least of His followers. Somebody you may not even know is following Jesus. The homeless man. The abused children. The single mother who's trying to raise three kids who just needs some help. The least of my followers. We're not, talking about, we're not talking about the people that are out in the forefront doing God's work every day for people to see. We're talking about the ones that are following Jesus, but they just don't have the strength or the wisdom they need to get out with everybody else. They're still a little too scared. They, they're afraid of that persecution. They don't want the ridicule. They feel like their lives have been nothing but ridicule already, and they don't need any more. How many times have you passed someone in the mall who just stunk to high heaven wearing clothes that they dug out of garbage cans? I pass one every day in Lamarck on my way home. Every day. And God bless, every day somebody is giving him something out of their car window. Okay? Just a small donation. A small handout. It may be a bag of french fries. It may be a dollar. It may be 50, 20. It may be a new jacket, a new pair of shoes. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about taking the judgment that we have from that person and tossing it. We're not judging them for who they are or what they are or the situation they're in. We don't know their story. We don't know how they got to be where they are. But we do know that if we could just give them a cup of cold water, something that means nothing to us, Something very minuscule, irrelevant in our lives. If we can give it to them, Jesus will reward us. The third thing I want to look at is what we're given. Okay, we've talked about it a little bit already. That cup of water. Just a cup of cold water. It, it takes very little preparation to give somebody some water. I could give this to Lori right now, but she wouldn't give it back. And I need it. <laughs> But it doesn't take much. Okay? We can get a glass of water for anybody. How many, how many of you have, have had uh, uh, city workers or county workers working out in front of your house and you've gone to give them a glass of tea or, or lemonade or water or something like that? Anybody? That's what we're talking about. Did it cost you anything? Did, did you lose anything from it? I mean, you can turn the faucet on and get all the water you want all day long. Granted, depending on where you live, it may be brown water, but, you know, this is Santa Fe, so we don't, we're not going to talk about that. 
Somebody from the city might be here. But it, it's, I mean, it's the simplest of gestures. It's the simplest, I mean, Kelly, how are you? You doing good? How was Christmas? It's simple. Just a little conversation. Sandy, I love you. It's simple. Just three little words. Lori Dave, y'all did a great job this morning. Mr. Bill was great. Words of encouragement. It's not hurting me to do it. Why don't I do it more often? You know, that's the question we all have to ask ourselves going into 2017. 2017. I got a son that's fixed to turn five next week. Or this week, Friday. Wow. It's little things. We take for granted every single day. We don't, we, don't, we don't think about the water that we take a shower with or the water that we drink. I will tell you this. We do worry about our filtration systems. We are concerned about what we take in from our faucets because it's full of chlorine and, and all kinds of bacteria. Man, what are those kids drinking over in another third world country? They're, they're drinking brown water, dirty water. Nasty water. I mean, it's bad. Okay? We don't think about the product itself and, and what it would do. How many of you have seen those TV commercials for the people that are going overseas and digging water wells? So they can get clean water. Clean water. Those kids and those people that live in those countries, when they see that clean water coming up out of the ground, they are excited. That just made their entire life so much better. Oh, because of a cup of cold water. Let's look, number four, let's look at the certainty of the reward. Jesus says, I assure you, I assure you that whoever, anyone, anybody, who can give just a cup of cold water to the least of my followers will be rewarded. I assure you. Jesus said, I assure you, you better wrap that up, fold it up, put it in your pocket, and go straight to the bank. He assured you that you have a reward coming for the simplest, kindest, most irrelevant thing in your life that you did for someone else, you will be rewarded. Turn with me to uh, Matthew 25, chapter, let's see, 25, 34 through 39. That's going to be on, where am I at here? Yes, page 756. <laughs> Just look at the screen. Preacher gets lost the screen, right? I, Sometimes. I'm going to start, I'm actually going to, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, this is going to be a little bit longer than what we put on there, but. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you led me, or fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your home. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? Or a stranger and show you the hospitality? Or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these of my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. So what does that tell you? If we take, uh, you know, surely everyone here, if, if Jesus had come to our door and we offered him a meal or a drink or gave him clothes, we would remember doing that to Jesus, would we not? We would, we would know it was Jesus. But what, what this scripture and what we, what, what we started with this morning is, Look, look, Jesus has a prison cell in every prison in the world. He's there. 
Jesus walks the floors of the cancer halls in every hospital across the world. He's there. Jesus is there with the homeless. Jesus is there with the mother that has the three children that she's trying to support on her own. He's there. He's everywhere, ladies and gentlemen. You never know. And, and, and it's that old saying about uh, you never know who you're talking to or I don't remember how it exactly goes, but something along those lines. You just don't know, okay? Some grubby old man could come up and ask you for a dime so he can get a cup of coffee somewhere. And if you turn your back on him, Jesus may walk away from you right then and right there. That could have been Jesus. That could have been Jesus saying, you know what, you're walking the walk, or you're talking the talk, let me see if you're walking the walk. You never know what somebody needs. You never know their backstory, their history. You don't know how they got there. And it shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter. You should be willing to help anybody, anytime. And Jesus assures you, you will get a reward. Back when Brother Mark Grimes came here from Caney Creek Cowboy Church and did a, a guest appearance for us on a Sunday, he set up a little test. Some of y'all are going to remember this. We just so happened that we had a homeless lady show up in the parking lot pushing a, a shopping cart. And she was welcomed right into our kitchen. She was given breakfast. She was hugged. She was, said, she was told, thank you for being here today. What can we do to help you? She was given a box full of food out of the food pantry. She came in here and she sat down and, and uh, she wasn't shunned. People were fighting over where to put her. She wasn't sitting in a chair by herself. There were people surrounding her. People praying with her when it was prayer request time. And Brother Grimes went on into his sermon and somewhere in the middle he stopped and said, I want y'all to meet so-and-so from my youth group at Caney Creek Cowboy Church. And this homeless lady stood up. She wasn't homeless. It was a test for Saltgrass Cowboy Church. And Saltgrass Cowboy Church opened their arms wide. And we hugged tight and we gave plenty. We loved on this lady like she'd been coming here all of her life. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how we need to each live our lives individually outside of this church. Be open, be caring, be loving, be giving. Don't judge somebody because of the way they look, the way they smell, the fact that they're pushing a shopping cart or living under a bridge or whatever the case may be. I understand. I understand the world and how it's hard not to judge people. I understand how you've been burned one too many times when you've given somebody on the corner a $20 bill just to come back the next day and see them getting out of an Escalade in the Walmart parking lot. I understand how it feels to get hurt and get burned, but let me tell you something. That's between them and God. You continue doing what you need to do for God's kingdom, and God will take care of the ones that are abusing it. There is no way, no how, no time when you should feel so proud of yourself that you can't help somebody else. None of us have accomplished that much in our life here on earth. Jesus made it pretty simple for us. He told us love is the most important thing there is. And He's telling us here today, He's telling us here today, if you could just give somebody a cold cup of water, you will be rewarded. How many people believe here that... that when we go in Jesus' name, He's with us. If we take a trip somewhere and we pray before we go, and we say, in the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. He's with us. Where two or more are gathered in His name, He is there. It's just a matter of getting it out. Getting it out in the street. Not, not just bringing it all to church and leaving it all at church when you leave. It's about getting out there and taking care of the world. We, want, we, want, we pray for God to come back to our country. We pray for, for people to seek His face. But yet we won't go outside to talk about it. We won't go outside to do anything in His name. You know, you, you could go uh, anywhere. Pick the grocery store. And you can have a conversation and talk about God. You say, God, God loves you. 
People will talk about God. They will. But if you say Jesus, they don't want to have anything to do with that. They don't understand the Holy Trinity. See, they don't understand the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They don't understand it. They know God because they've heard it all their lives. They may or may not believe, but they know God. But Jesus is a whole other conversation that just makes people uncomfortable. Well, I've heard stories about this. Jesus, he, he had a crown of thorns and was bleeding in the picture. Yeah. That's good. That's a good start. Okay? But do you know why he was there? Do you know what he did to, to get there? Do you know why he did what he did to be there? These are things we have to get out and talk about. We can't be afraid. We can take somebody that cold cup of water, but if we're not praying for them at the same time, we're not accomplishing what we need to accomplish. Yes, you will be rewarded, for that cup of water, for that small act of kindness. Jesus just told you so. He assures you you will be rewarded for that cup of water. But we can go one more step further. The people of Sawgrass Cowboy Church can take one more step. And some of you do already on a daily basis, and I love you for it. Makes, makes me being up here a lot easier when I got back up. You know what I mean? If I can say go talk to this person or that person, and they're going to tell you the same thing I just told you without us talking, that's the way it works. And everybody in this church can do that. Everybody in this church can be that. Now, I kind of set Dave up with his prayer request. And it was to make a point now about taking that stand for, I don't work on Sundays. It's hard. you got to support your family. You know, there's not, there's not a whole lot. Of, there are companies that won't work on Sunday. Hallelujah, praise Jesus. But not all the companies are like that. And Dave just happens to work in a refinery where it's all about roll gold, you know what I mean? If they're not making money, then we're not happy. If the oil industry isn't pumping a new well somewhere, we're not happy. You know, everybody's fixing to get real upset here in about three months when the price of gas goes back over $3. But I'm going to tell you what, it's what the country needs. That's when we run good. Life will get better, I promise you. You're not going to like pulling up to the pump every time you got to do that, but you're going to know in the back of your mind that the world is running better because of it. Dave is a devout Christian man. Talked to him several times, conversations, you name it. He wants to take that stand. He wants to say, brother, I, I can't work on Sunday. That's the Sabbath day. The Bible tells me that's a day of rest. I, I can't do it. But he knows the minute he broaches that subject with the owners of his company, he's going to be let go. And he's got to have that job. He's got to put food on the table. He's got to keep the electric bill paid. He's got to buy the groceries. He's got to buy the clothes, the car insurance, the fuel. He's got to do it. So let me ask you this. You take that company, which there are a whole bunch of them out there, and you compare it to Troy's company, who boldly pronounces on every piece of literature, flyer, radio spot that they love God. They don't work on Sunday. How do we get, how do we get the, the scales of balance back the other way? Right now we're this way. God's over here on the high side. God's over here and, and works over here. It's, it's just so many people that have to work on Sunday. How do we get it? How do we get it back balanced and put it the other direction? How many people remember uh, leaving church on Sunday morning when you were a kid, and there wasn't anywhere to go but home? There wasn't a store open. There wasn't a gas station open. You couldn't if you didn't get supplies on Saturday night for Sunday lunch. You were just eating slam sandwiches when you got home because there wasn't anything open on Sunday. I remember the blue law. What happened to the blue law? Somebody blew it up. We don't have it anymore. Nobody cares. Nobody thinks that, that Sunday should be a Sabbath because nobody reads their Bible. It's just a just an ornament on the coffee table for some people if they even got it in their house. You know? The smallest things. A cup of water. How can a cup of water Assure me a reward from Jesus. It's simple. 
You're showing somebody some love, which is the most important thing. You're showing somebody some mercy, some grace. Just a small conversation for somebody who needed it. I can't tell you how many times somebody's just picked up the phone and called and said, Hey, what's up? Nothing. What can I do for you? Nothing. I just called to see how you're doing. Cool, man. Appreciate that. It doesn't happen very often. But when it does, it's refreshing. It makes you feel good. It makes you feel new again. This is a new year. It's a time to try new things. So let's try to get out in the, in the community. Let's try to speak about Jesus a little more often. Let's try to be loving and giving and merciful and give grace. Let's try these things. Let's quit doing this all the time. I didn't see that. I didn't see it. La, 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 la. Let's try something different. Let's try something new. Let's take the time to love somebody that you've never, ever met in your entire life and just see what kind of friendship grows. We've got, we've got a new married couple here in the Burns family. They're doing something new this year. They're starting a family. Amen. Praise God. Congratulations, guys. They weren't fearful. I mean, maybe they were. I don't know. A little bit. Poquito. Yeah. They, you know, just a little. But they knew that they loved each other so much that they could battle anything together. How do you think Jesus feels when you take his name? He's got your back. He knows that the two of you can defeat anything that's thrown at you. You can't forsake his name. You can't drop his name. You can't turn your back on his name. You can't run away from his name. You have to do everything in his name. Turn with me to uh, Matthew 18. There you go. 749. Matthew 18, verse 20. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. We come here every Sunday. We come here every Wednesday. While I'm thinking about that new Bible study that Dan announced this morning, this is going to be uh, kind of a tie-in to the Barn Fellowship that the Hitchcocks were doing. We're going to do it here. Probably going to be discussing food at some point, I would think. But it got to be too big for their house. So if there's anybody else here that wants to start a barn fellowship at their house, it can house anywhere from 10 to 20 people, feel free to get with one of the elders or lay pastors or myself, okay? But that new Bible study starting every other Sunday is going to be presented by the Hitchcocks. I'm right about that, right? Okay. Or anybody that wants to do it. Yeah. If, there, if there's somebody else that wants to step up and run that, just just get with Troy or Mindy or myself or anybody else. Okay. Back. We come here on Sundays. Sometimes two or three times. We come here on Wednesdays. We were up here yesterday. We come on Mondays and have meetings. We come on Tuesdays and have meetings. Meetings. There's there are so many times when there are people gathered here at the church where we know Jesus is. We know God's here. We're all believers. We all believe that He's here. We do everything we can do in His name and He is here. But what we don't do is we don't gather outside the church. That's something that that's something that I just I don't want to say it's a goal because it's not a goal, it's something we should be doing already. Okay, so let's just say that Saltgrass Cowboy Church is going to be more active in the community this year. Alright? I, I don't I don't care if it if, if we just go stand outside of H E B in Arlen's uh, and just talk to people and hand out stickers. I I don't know what we're going to do. I don't have a plan, but God does. And He's telling me that we're going to be more active in our community. And for that, I'm thankful. Because wherever we go, He's going to be there. And people are going to get to meet Him. People are going to get to feel His love. People are going to get to feel His grace, His mercy, His kindness. And that's what we have to do, folks. We're going to try something new this year. We're going to try to get out in the community. We're going to do more. We're going, to, we're going to get off of our hands. We're going, to, we're going to quit walking by saying, I didn't see that, I didn't hear that. 
Today, we have, uh, we have a baptism today because uh, somebody else agrees that it's time to do something new in their life. And uh, as you can see, we've done some new things up here on the stage. We've got some new lights. We don't have the hangy downy lights like y'all have out there. I've got ones that